Over the weekend, Hoop fans were shocked when Spurs legend Tony Parker decided to leave San Antonio after 16 years to join the Charlotte Hornets. We'll take a look at that and more off-season transactions with radio host Brandon Scoop B. Robinson. Scoop now joins us live through Skype from New York. Good morning, Scoop. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Doing well. Glad you could join us today. Well, Scoop, before we talk about Tony Parker and the Spurs, I want to ask your thoughts on Carmelo Anthony being bought out and the possibilities of which teams he may end up playing for. Well, Carmelo Anthony, in a lot of respects, uh, has, has taken longer form deals uh, dating back to the Nuggets and then going to the Knicks and then re-upping there and not following his counterparts and, and, and Dwayne Wade and LeBron taking shorter term deals. So now is the time to really cement your legacy. He's been a great Olympics player. Uh, but he's never been able to seal the deal in the regular season. So a buyout with the Oklahoma City Thunder surely assures either a move over to the Lakers with his friend LeBron James, uh, the Golden State Warriors, uh, greener pastures there, or the Houston Rockets, the team he should have signed with the first time back in 2014. But, but which team do you think he would fit in the most amongst all those teams where he could, you know, really make an impact? Because it seemed like he wasn't too happy with his role in the Thunder, although he did have to adjust and sacrifice a lot of it. Where can we see, like, Carmelo where he was before, even if, well, he is a bit older right now? Of course. Well, I think Carmelo Anthony uh, at this point in his career is still a premium volume shooter. Uh, that being said, uh, any team that LeBron James plays on is predicated upon pure shooters. Uh, it would be great for him to finally play with his friend uh, out in L.A. who maintains a residence out there. And the Lakers is definitely a sure shot. I, I think the Warriors and the Lakers are up there. But uh, familiarity, familiarity excuse me, is something that he's familiar with in LeBron James. I think the Lakers is, is definitely a, a, a surefire uh, win for him. Okay, now let's move on to Tony Parker leaving the Spurs. All right, so Tony Parker is gone. The Spurs just let go of Kyle Anderson and not, I mean, deciding to match the offer of the Grizzlies. That means they're missing yep. two players. Kawhi Leonard's in limbo. What is going on with the Spurs? What's next for them? What's going to happen to Manu? Is he going to retire? I mean, what do you see happening with, with the whole Spurs situation? Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Manu Ginobili. He's the last of the, the core of uh, Tim Duncan and Tony Parker and even David Robinson from those early uh -huh. championship Spurs years. What you're seeing with the Spurs is kind of, um, you know, Greg Popovich is kind of like the college coach. He, he's the, he's the, the, the sun shines, rises, and sets on him. And um, I, I think what you're seeing, and you began to see it last year, guys like LaMarcus Aldridge weren't necessarily happy with Greg Popovich and his old-school way. Pop's been a coach with the Spurs for, for since, I think, 96, after Larry Brown uh -huh. stepped down. And uh, what you're seeing with the Spurs is really just older guys leaving and younger guys knowing their work, knowing their brand. They still have Kawhi, but it's not looking good on that side with Kawhi. Kyle Anderson, as you mentioned before, uh, signing with the Memphis Grizzlies and the Spurs won't match. The team is built around LaMarcus Aldridge and uh, Manu Ginobili right now. So I really think it's great that Tony Parker can mentor guys like uh, Kemba Walker and go to a Charlotte Hornets team that's had, had the bright upside, new head coach. Um, and, and, and Willie Hernan Gomez has been playing well in the summer league. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what the Spurs do, uh, particularly with this Kawhi situation. I think that'll predicate the, on what other players will do moving forward in free agency. But, yeah, the Spurs are, are, are definitely um, winding down. All right. Well, since you mentioned Tony Parker in a bit of a mentorship role, it seems like, it seems like he still wants to play, though, because, I mean, one of the reasons why he left the Spurs is to get more a, a better opportunity, perhaps. Do you still... Think he has it in him to really help the Hornets? I mean, will he be a difference maker at all? Will the Hornets, as you said, they're a new team right now. Do you see them making a run for the playoffs even or, or not quite? The East is wide open right now. As you know, LeBron James going to the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, obviously, Philadelphia uh, and the Boston Celtics are the top seeds uh, looking, looking at rosters. Um, I think when you look at the Eastern Conference right now, in addition to the Charlotte Hornets uh, being uh, plentiful with uh, certain guys on the team, you know, they, they traded Dwight Howard uh, to the Brooklyn Nets and then got a, and Howard was bought out. Uh, but I think the Hornets, in addition to the, the Washington Wizards and the Indiana Pacers, uh, quietly had a great offseason uh, in free agency. So I, I think Charlotte will be in the mix. But come on, man, you know nobody's beating the Sixers or the Boston Celtics <laughs> these days. Yeah, you have a point there. Okay, now I want to ask you, <laughs> Scoop, who, who do you think are the best remaining free agents who can still make an impact on uh, any interesting information you may have on you know, who's moving, who's going where? Um, you know, just what's going on in the free agent scene there? Clint Capella. Uh-huh. Clint Capella. Is, there a, is, is he going to leave the Rockets? Is there a chance? 
Yeah, I think so. But, I mean, the one thing that I think is interesting, and you saw this with Draymond Green, he took less money to go with a contender. Uh-huh. And I think when you look at somebody like Clint Capella, yeah, he's young. Draymond Green's young. Uh, but I, I think there are some teams that, that could use him. But I think the Rockets are in an interesting situation uh, because Trevor Reeves is signed with the Phoenix Suns. So, you know, that's why when you asked me about Carmelo Anthony before, I think Carmelo Anthony would be a great uh, uh-huh. roster fill for the Rockets. But when you look at the Houston Rockets, they're going to miss Trevor Reeves' or they're going to miss Trevor Reeves' leadership. They need Clint Capella, and Ryan Anderson can't fill the role that Clint Capella can. Rebounding, uh, defense, blocking shots, giving you 20 points and sometimes 20 rebounds a game. I think that's the most viable option. And also, Isaiah Thomas is still up there. There were reports that uh, the Orlando Magic and, and Isaiah's uh, value, they kind of stalled there. I mean, this is a guy about 15 months ago, You, we were saying he was – our MVP of the NBA. So I think those are the two names that really stand out right now, Isaiah Thomas and Click Capella. That's awesome. Very well said, Scoop. Hey, thanks so much for joining us and hope we can talk to you again real soon. Oh, we're going to talk real soon. Thanks for having me, brother.